What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Network Plus 009 certification. So let's get into it. The Open Systems Interconnection or the OSI model. This is a foundational framework for understanding and implementing network communication. It was developed by the International Organization of Standardization, and this seven layer model breaks down the processes of network communication into manageable and distinct functions. Now, for those preparing for the CompTIA Network Plus certification, understanding the OSI model is not only essential, but also a cornerstone for mastering networking concepts. And in this video, we're going to go through the seven layers of the OSI model. So we have the physical layer, the data link layer, network, transport, session, presentation, and application. We're going to explore Explore the key functions, protocols, and devices that are associated with each layer, ensuring you have a clear and practical understanding. All right, so let's talk about layer one, which is known as the physical layer. So the physical layer, this is the foundation of the OSI model responsible for the transmission of raw binary data over a physical medium. And this layer includes the hardware elements of networking, such as cables, switches, and network interface cards. And its key functions are as follows. So it defines the physical characteristics of the network, such as voltage levels, timing, and data rates. It converts binary data into signals, such as electrical, optical, or radio for transmission, and it handles the physical connection between devices. And some common devices and technologies that fall up on the physical layer are Ethernet cables, such as CAT5e, CAT6, and fiber optics. You have hubs and repeaters, and you have physical ports and connectors. Now, for an exam tip, you want to be familiar with the types of cables, such as twisted pair, coaxial, and fiber optic, and their respective use cases, including transmission speeds and distances. All right, so let's move on and talk about layer two, which is known as the data link layer. So the data link layer, this ensures reliable transmission of data over the physical layer by establishing error detection and correction mechanisms. And it is divided into two sub layers. You have what is called the logical link control and the media access control. And its key functions are as follows. So it organizes data into frames for transmission. It provides error detection and flow control, and it manages access to the the physical medium using MAC addresses. And some of the common protocols and devices are as follows. So you have what is called Ethernet or IEEE 802.3. You have Wi-Fi. This is IEEE 802.11. And then you have switches and bridges. Now, as another exam tip, you want to understand how MAC addresses function and the role of switches and forwarding frames based on these addresses. Additionally, you want to grasp the concept of VLANs and how they segment networks at this layer. All right, next let's talk about layer three, which is known as the network layer. And the network layer is responsible for determining the best path for data to travel between devices on different networks. And it uses logical addressing such as IP addresses to route packets. And its key functions are as follows. So it provides logical addressing and routing, fragmentation and reassembly of packets and path determination based on routing protocols. And some common protocols and devices are as follows. So you have the internet protocol protocol, IP version 4 and IP version 6. They have various routing protocols such as OSPF, EIGRP, and BGP. And then you have routers that move the data from one network to another. And as an exam tip, you want to be able to distinguish between IP version 4 and IP version 6 addressing and understand how routing protocols function to direct traffic across networks. All right, next let's talk about layer four, which is known as the transport layer. And the transport layer provides end-to-end -end communication control and ensures complete data transfer. It segments data into smaller units, manages connections, and facilitates error recovery. And some of its key functions are as follows. So there's segmentation and the reassembly of data. It offers flow control and congestion avoidance. And it also offers error detection and correction. And some common protocols associated with it are our transmission control protocol and user datagram protocol. Now, as another exam tip, you want to understand the differences between TCP and UDP. So TCP is connection oriented and reliable, while UDP is connectionless and faster but less reliable. And recognizing scenarios where each protocol is used, such as streaming for UDP or email for TCP, this is also crucial. 
All right, so let's move on to layer five, which is known as the session layer. And the session layer, this manages and controls the dialogue between two devices, and it establishes, maintains, and terminates communication sessions. And its key functions are as follows. So there's the session establishment, maintenance, and termination. There's synchronization and dialogue control. And then there's managing multiple sessions. And its common use cases are as follows. So you'll find it being used in remote procedure calls, network file systems, and session initiation protocol. Now, as an exam tip, while the session layer is less tangible than the other layers, it focuses on its role in maintaining session states and ensuring orderly communication between devices. All right, so let's move on and talk about layer six, which is known as the presentation layer. And the presentation layer, this ensures that data is in a usable format for the application layer, and it handles data encoding, encryption, and compression. And its key functions are data transmission and formatting, encryption and decryption, and compression and decompression. And the common standards that are associated with it are secure sockets layer, the transport layer security, JPEG, MP peg and ASCII. And as an exam tip, you want to recognize how the presentation layer facilitates compatibility between different systems by standardizing data formats. And also remember that encryption protocols like SSL and TLS, they also operate at this layer. And then let's talk about our last layer, which is layer seven, which is known as the application layer. And this is the layer that is the closest to the end user, providing network services and interfaces for applications, and it enables software to communicate over the network. And its key functions are as follows. So there's network service requests and responses. There's resource sharing and remote access. And then there's end user application interaction. And the common protocols and applications that are found at this layer are HTTP or hypertext transfer protocol, file transfer protocol, simple mail transfer protocol, and the domain name system. And as an exam tip, you want to understand the protocols and services that operate at this layer, particularly their role in facilitating user to network interactions. So for example, DNS, this resolves domain names to IP addresses, while HTTP facilitates web browsing. And here are some study tips to help you memorize the OSI model. So you want to use what are called mnemonics. So you want to remember the layers with phrases like, please do not throw sausage pizza away, which stands for physical data link network transport session presentation and application. You also want to understand relationships. So you want to grasp how data flows between layers and the interaction between protocols and devices at each layer. And then there are some practical scenarios. So if you get the chance, you want to apply your knowledge to real world networking issues to solidify your understanding. And you can do that by doing some labs. And if you want to go to my website, Technology G, I offer a whole bunch of virtual web browser-based labs to help you really grasp these concepts. Now, mastering the OSI model, this will provide a strong foundation for networking. And with this knowledge, you're not just preparing for the Network Plus exam, but you're building expertise that will serve you throughout your IT career. So to wrap this lesson up, the OSI model layer, this works in unison to enable seamless communication across networks from the raw transmission of binary data at the physical layer to end user interaction at the application layer. Each layer serves a distinct role while interacting with adjacent layers. Now, understanding the OSI model, this is critical for the CompTIA Network Plus exam. So focus on the functions, protocols, and devices associated with each layer. And by mastering this framework, you will not only be well prepared for the exam, but also equipped with a fundamental knowledge base for your networking career. Now let's get to the fun part the check on learning. So the first question is, which layer of the OSI model is responsible for establishing, maintaining, and terminating connections between two devices? Would it be layer three, layer four, layer five, or layer seven? And the correct answer is it will be layer five or the session layer. So the session layer is responsible for managing and controlling the dialogue between two devices. It establishes, maintains, and terminates communication sessions. And this layer ensures proper data exchange and controls interactions between devices during communication. Next question. At which OSI layer do switches primarily operate to forward frames based on MAC addresses? Would it be layer one? layer two, layer three, or layer four. 
And the correct answer is it will be layer two of a data link layer. So switches, they primarily operate at the data link layer of the OSI model. They forward frames based on MAC addresses and are essential for LAN communication. And this layer handles frame creation, addressing, and error detection for data transmission. And our final question, which OSI layer is responsible for the end-to-end -end delivery of data and ensures error recovery and flow control? Would it be layer three, layer four, layer six, or layer seven? And the correct answer is it will be layer four, which is known as the transport layer. So the transport layer is responsible for reliable delivery of data between devices. It provides end-to-end -end error recovery, flow control, and segmentation of data. And protocols like TCP or the Transmission Control Protocol, they operate at this layer to ensure data integrity and proper sequencing.